Welcome to today's video on writing to persuade. The first thing I want to tell you is that most teachers find a very narrow focus. You might have learnt a forest or da forest uh, to learn persuasive writing techniques. But that's really like trying to teach someone to ride a bicycle with stabilizers. Yes, it gets you from A to B and it stops you falling over, but it's not really riding a bicycle. Uh, so today I want to teach you how to aim your sights higher. So this is what I teach my students. Ah! Faster croc! Uh, that's my handy mnemonic for remembering uh, nearly all the persuasive writing techniques. A, alliteration. H, hyperbole, which means over-exaggeration. Notice it's spent, spelt hyperbole, but pronounced hyperbole. F is for facts. Uh, a, anecdote, which means uh, a little story um, that purports to be true, may not be, but a little story nevertheless. S, statistics. T, the rule of three, the pattern of three, uh, triplets, however you've been taught it. E is emotive language. R is repetition. C, contrasting pairs, and I'll explain what that is later using the great uh, Jeremy Clarkson as an example. R, rhetorical question. O for opinion and C for creating an enemy. Uh, so that's where I started raising the ambitions of my students and we'd do this as a starter activity. I'd just get uh, five people up and they'd have to go through this whole list in order from memory and it works remarkably quickly. Uh, if you want to remember it, uh, here's my little clue. That's what's happened when the faster crocs got you. Um, what I use in class is in fact drawing and uh, you'll see that in a minute. So here's, um, I've had to write it from memory. I just uh, give the students the typed version. So it's just the mnemonic, and then I have to add things as they call them out in order. Uh, but you will have noticed, if you were perceptive, that uh, my mnemonic has changed from a faster croc to ah, faster crotch. Uh, if I go back there, you'll see that the crotch has um, been misspelt, uh, you know, normally has a T in it, but I'm attempting to get humour in here. Um, many boys in particular really enjoy putting humour into um, into their writing, and it's encouraged in the mark scheme. And girls, I know you're humorous too, um, put it in. So, A faster crotch. I'm going to show you another short piece that I think would get an A star. And this was written in a mock by... Um, one of the students in a, in a previous school. So she had to write an application for a summer job. Uh, look at the unconventional way she begins. Smile! Have you ever felt depressed at work? When the monotonous duties become a torture and the bland whirl walls turn into a prison, what you need is someone cheerful, inspiring and creative. Me. I am like a ray of sunshine on a rainy day. No more boring blues for you. I will jazz up your life. I'm not just being boastful. 95% of former colleagues said they absolutely adored and completely craved my special smile. Not only will you be gaining a momentous motivator, I'm an extraordinarily hard worker too. Need coffee? I can pour it. Need essays? I can type them. Need spreadsheets? I can do maths too. You don't often meet someone who can juggle and walk a tightrope at the same time, but then I'm not your average person. It's these skills that make me perfect to work in your circus. Simply put, I can multitask like a girl. Because I am a girl. Perfect. Uh, so, I hope you found that rather entertaining. And I'll try and show you how a faster crotch or a faster croc has really helped her here. Let's have a look at the language. Well, if I'm crafting um, sentences for effect, I've got a single word paragraph here. There it is. Uh, so I'm getting a mark for that. And uh, look at the way she begins her sentences. Have, when, I, no, and you can see I'm, things aren't getting repeated, not, need, this repetition then is for effect, isn't it, I again, another need, I again, but these repetitions again are a beautiful um, kind of chorus, if you like, 
a, a repetition that's deliberate. You, it's simply perfect. And you can see that actually this candidate is really crafting their writing. Uh, let me just clear those annotations and uh, we can start looking at the techniques. Uh, now what I teach my students is what I call the random finger technique. Um, and so whenever you look at a piece of writing, uh, you can just shut your eyes, stab it anywhere at random, and you will find um, a technique of some sort. There I am just plopping these things down as though that's a random technique. Uh, so here we go. Okay, I just missed it there, but that's a rhetorical question. Uh, when the monotonous duties become a torture, well, that's suddenly a metaphor, isn't it? And the bland walls turn into a prison, another metaphor. I'm like a ray of sunshine, a simile. 95% uh, it's a statistic. This is actually the only weakness um, in the answer. It's obviously a made-up statistic, isn't it? Um, but it still, it still works. I'm not just being boastful, emotive language. I'm an extraordinarily hard worker, emotive language. Need coffee, rhetorical questions. Need essay, repetition for effect, rhetorical question. You get the idea. Anywhere that your finger goes, there's a technique. In other words, this is a candidate who's trained herself to use a faster crotch no matter what. Every single sentence will have a technique in it. Um, now, the way to practice this is, is actually remarkably simple. Um, what I'll teach my students to do is just respond under time conditions. So if you're practicing it, I do this. I start somewhere on my list and I say to them, right, you've got one minute and one minute only to come up with a sentence. Uh, and so the first one might be that. Okay, your first sentence has to have a rule of three in it. You can carry on writing a bit more in the one minute but go. And at the end of the minute I'll hit um, the next one. You must use emotive language in your next one. And one minute. And so on. In the third minute it's repetition. Now of course, if we go back to um, the response that I showed you earlier, um, you'll see hopefully that she's trained herself to use more than one technique in each sentence. Uh, so here she began with that one word uh, sentence. Uh, it's also an instruction, an imperative verb, not, not one of our techniques. Have you ever felt depressed at work? Well, here we've got emotive language with our rhetorical question. When the monotonous duties here, she's really striving for that vocabulary. Uh, we've already talked about it being a metaphor and then another metaphor and then emotive language cheerful and of course torture was emotive language and prison was emotive language inspiring and creative like me well here we've got a contrasting pair the creative and inspiring compared to monotonous and torture uh, here we've got effectively another one word sentence but it's linked to this one using the colon um, you'll see that she is literally chucking punctuation at the thing as though it was something in her pocket uh, we've got the colon, the question mark, we've got uh, a really complex sentence here with lots of uh, clauses um, helpfully demarcated with the commas and uh, that sort of thing is going to carry on here. We've got linked sentences using the semicolons. Um, she's really thinking about crafting these sentences. Down here we've got a one word sentence again uh, with an exclamation mark. She's realised she's got to use brackets and inside that bracket is the punchline. I can multitask like a girl because I am a girl. Um, hopefully you get the idea. You just throw everything at your piece of writing and completely show off. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the easiest way to get an A star. Uh, finally, these persuasive techniques, the R faster crotch ones, work equally well with argument writing. And so you kill two birds with one stone.